Here is uh, one more example. So we looked at loop unrolling. Maybe it's it's a good time to take uh, to understand how loop unrolling can be done. After you have seen the benefits, uh, wait. So let's see. Let me see if I can share a blank slide. Okay, let's see. All of you can see the blank slide, right? Yeah. Good. See how. See if I have a for loop. Okay. Where I have some initialization, some condition, and some other increment statement. I'm not even showing what the code is. Okay, and the body s. Yes. And I have been told, unroll it so many times. I'll I'll show it for doing it uh, twice. Okay. So what what should be the code for? The same initialization that shouldn't change. Condition can remain the same. Increment can remain the same. S. Increment S. Do you see that this particular code is equivalent to this code? So this is the original. This is the optimized. Do you see that the particular code is say uh, uh, equivalent? You will have to check the condition after the increment. Ah, very good. That's one more thing that's fine. If so, if I know, see, if I am adding this condition, if condition rather, if not condition break. Then I haven't gotten all the benefits of unrolling the let out table. Let us say I know this condition. Let us say I know this condition. Can I do anything better? Let us say my code is like this. It's a it's a for loop. I less than To n, or rather, i less i less than n, i plus plus. I want to uh, like before uh, unroll it, uh, unroll this loop body uh, loop by once, so that I'll have two bodies of s. So what I will do is the following. See, there are two possibilities, right? N is a multiple of two. N is not a multiple of two. So what will I do is the following. I can write m equal to n integer division two multiplied by two. Okay, i equal to zero, i less than m, i plus plus. Okay. And what will I do? So I know now that I. So if I write s and s, if I write this, this is great. Um, so instead of writing i i plus plus, I'll make it as i equal to i plus two. And in this is s, and here I will write it as every occurrence of i replace it with i plus one. Do you see here? I do not need if condition break. Can you see why? You can make it outside the. Sorry. Ah, uh, you can make it outside the loop. No, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you be slightly louder? Yeah, I think uh, we can use the condition. You are saying we still need the condition check here?
yeah so this is the equivalent code so what did i do i took the uh, if let's say n is 11 m becomes 10 so i will execute the loop from 0 to 10 and the last iteration i'm doing it separately i actually don't need in a for here but fine so instead of 2 if i'm uh, unrolling it by with k then i will replace this with k replace this with k and i will have so many copies of s here and here i equal to i plus k k minus 1 so what did i do i just unrolled the loop so many times is, is this fine do, do you see that this loop can always be transformed to this loop and this is correct i have reduced the number of condition checks and number of jumps guys siddharth jain meenakshi any questions so oh, thanks i'm good okay sneha sopori uh, no questions thank you aditi shambho any questions okay okay so this is the, this is the idea of loop unrolling right so loop unrolling what did we do we took the loop we modified it we modified the loop slightly so that if i'm unrolling it uh, if i'm repeating the body k times this m is a multiple of that k okay fine if you are fine with the idea of loop unrolling um we will go to uh, another cool example called loop invariant code motion one one more optimization okay let me share the start sharing my slides so sir i have a question sure in the right. first slide about loop and rolling you mentioned like subtle secondary effects ah <laughs> yes and the question is uh, like what are those very good see what happened is i have increased the size of the loop loop body correct yeah as a result it can impact few other things namely instruction scheduling register allocation okay and so on okay and these things are uh, not very easy to reason about so i just put it as there are effects let's be aware of them hmm? right. good question good question vikram you had a question your your hand is raised correct vikram no 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 okay okay rupanshu very good question rupanshu where are you from uh, bits pilani sir bits pilani which campus hyderabad anyway all right all right cool um let's go with one more optimization called as loop invariant factoring or loop invariant code motion what is a loop invariant loop invariant is an expression which remains constant throughout the loop and it is computed within the loop okay let us say i have a loop in this i am computing some expression if the value of this expression does not change then it's a loop invariant i can actually compute this expression outside something like i'll write t1 equal to expr and wherever this expr is there i just write replace with t1 do you see that this is efficient 
अनुपम जुनिवा Here inside the let's say the loop goes over hundred times. How many times am, am I evaluating this expression? Hundred times. Very good. Once I do this transformation where this expression is moved out, how many times am I evaluating this expression? Once. So which is more efficient? Um, when when we are moving out the expression. Right. Correct. Correct. So. The loop independent code here executes only once, right? Yes. All right. So let's look at a small piece of code. Okay. You may wonder why should anyone write code which is loop invariant? Not always people write it explicitly, but let's look at the simple code. I have a for loop that. Uh, For loop nest hundred 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 cross hundred cross hundred, and I am initializing the values of this three dimensional matrix A. Do you see that I have total hundred uh, cross hundred cross hundred iterations, and here I have. Three million index operations, correct? Yes or no? Because a sub i j k is same as a sub. You do a sub i, then do sub j, then do sub k, correct? So this is three million index operations, two million multiplications. Are we fine so far? Yes. Um, Vishnu Ajit. Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Good. What about you, Yashas? Any questions, Yashas? Or you are comfortable? You, you are uh, okay with this example and what it does so far? Jashas Angalori, Rajat B L R, or B is it? My eyes are not very clear. Yes, sir, it is Rajat B. Okay, Rajat B. Okay, my eyesight is good. Okay, fine. Uh, be ready for a shock now. Okay, within ten minutes. If you are not shocked, let me know. Are there any loop invariant codes here? Are there loop invariant expressions here? I and J are invariant for the K loop. Just the variable I is not interesting. However, I and J are uh, invariant. Yes, but I, I mean, we are looking for an expression, not just a variable. I and J do not change within the K loop. That's a very good observation. What does it mean? What's the consequence? I mean, I can just multiply K to the next value in the array, and then add the one below that and the one below that. Very good. So what I can do is I times J. I can compute it once here. Correct. I can write t1 equal to i times j and replace this with t1. Correct. How many multiplications will it be then? Anupam, you are saying something? Yeah, one million and uh, ten thousand. Ten thousand. One million and ten thousand. So by this, the number of multiplications from two million has come down to one million ten thousand. Is there any other loop invariant expression here? Ah, uh, yes, invariant in the J. But 
I mean, I is just a single variable. I'm not doing any computation, right? Uh, um, I guess accessing AIJ. Absolutely. So look at this way. This AIJ is invariant for the scale loop. So I could do T2 equal to A sub IJ and then do T2 sub K equal to blah. T1 times K. But here again, there is one more invariant. Do you see this? The A sub i is an invariant for the J loop. So I could write T3 equal to A sub i here and write T2 equal to T3 sub J. How do you like that? In this case, how many index operations will I have? Let me show the code. Let me show. Yeah. Uh, uh, how many index operations do I have? There is 1 million index operations here. 10,000 index operations here and 100 index operations here. So compared to 3 million, it become 1 million plus 10K plus 100. And instead of 2 million, it became it became how much? 1 million plus 10k. Oh, sorry. 1 million. 1 million multiplications. No way. 1 million plus 1 million plus the outside is 1 there. Then. Do you guys see the, uh, the impact of loop invariant code motion uh, so far? Any questions? We will now see how to do loop invariant code motion. Um, I, I had a question. Like, um, we did like t three equals to a of i. So won't that increase the space? Like, because we fetch the complete a i. No, 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 oh, no. We don't get the full array, right? I mean, when we do t three equal to a sub i, it is just one load of that address a sub i. Right? Okay. Okay. Just I mean, the address. We're just getting the address. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. We there's no. See, when we write A, what is A? A is an array. That means it's just an array. I mean, it's the beginning of the memory which holds this whole array element. In C, Java, we don't pass the full array, right? We just pass the address. Yes, yes, understood. Okay. Any other question? No? Okay. See, the loop, uh, <sighs> when we did this loop transformation, right, we want to know whether it is, uh, wait, yeah, we want to again see safety, is it safe to do, where is the opportunity, where is the profitability, okay. So we will, uh, for loop invariant code motion, let us study the same things, how to find the opportunity, how to do is it safe to do and is it profitable? Okay. Um, what's the time now? 10.26. I think we can. Uh, Ramkrishna, is it okay if I take, uh, if I go to 11.35 and take the break there? Or other students, do you have any issues? Yeah, this will take 5 to 10 minutes to close this loop in very important. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead. Okay, see loop invariant code motion to do this. Let's get some definitions. What is a loop invariant? It's an expression which remains constant within the loop body. Okay, which remains constant within the loop body. We'll define something called a relevant variable. What is a relevant variable for an expression? Relevant variables for an expression are those variables that are used to compute that expression. Okay. So first to do to do loop invariant code motion, what will I do? I'll first identify the variables which are defined in the loop. Defined as in written to. Defined as in 
return to. I will call that set as loop def. Now I will pick an expression and check if it is a loop invariant. How will I how will I know it's a loop invariant? A loop invariant will have no relevant variables in loop def. Let us say my loop in my expression I have is uh, p plus q minus r. This is the expression I'm talking about. So if this if for me to declare this expression as loop invariant. P, Q, and R should not be in loop def. Okay? Then what will I do? I will assign this whole loop invariant and every other loop invariant I find to a different temporary in the loop header. So if the loop starts here, before this I will write P equal to P plus Q minus R. And in this, wherever there is uh, wherever there was p plus q minus r, I'll replace it with p. Okay? So in the loop body, I will use this newly created temporary instead of this loop invariant expression. Is this idea clear? I find out what are the variables defined in the loop. Defined as in written to, that I call as loop def. Then find out loop invariants. Okay. Let us see, I have done the following. Okay. Well, any questions on the opportunity part on how to identify loop invariants? Mayur? Yes, sir. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Gagandhi, any doubts? Sir, why it is uh, written loop invariant expression metro exception? I am coming to the safety part. I am coming to the safety part. I, let's oh, understand. Okay. How. Ayushi? No questions so far, sir. Thank you. What about Athar? No questions. Very good. Okay. Let us see. I have the following code. Loop. Uh, then I am writing if condition throw. Throw some exception. Okay. Throw some exception. Details I am skipping. And here I have the same loop invariant that I was talking about. P plus Q minus R. Okay? If I move this code here, and I write P equal to P plus Q minus R. In the actual loop, this should have executed only if the exception is not thrown. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now I am executing this code first and then later I may throw an exception. You may say, what's the big deal? Right? You may say, what's the big deal? I will, I will show you what's the big deal. Uh, let us say the code is like this. If P equal to null, throw exception. Okay. This is uh, capital null. Uh, don't take it as uh, this thing. Uh, C plus plus capital null. And otherwise, I am accessing P arrow field. X equal to P arrow field. Okay? Now, this part is loop invariant, isn't it? P is not changing anywhere. P arrow F is loop invariant. If I move this thing outside the loop, what will happen? The code will be, see, I'm writing in the middle all around. The code will be T equal to P arrow F. 
then loop somewhere here i have a throw followed by x equal to t if p is null what will happen this will be a sec fault isn't it here i should have thrown this a different uh, exception so do you see that loop invariant code motion when i'm moving the expression i have to be careful that if there are exceptions that are thrown i shouldn't move the code above naively like this does it make sense why these exceptions can change the uh, semantics do you see that the if i have code like this loop here this is not equivalent to this loop kuldeep gautam yes sir uh do you see that the loop here i mark this with the uh, A is not same as the loop marked with B. It's not equivalent. Sir, it's not properly visible to me actually. It's not clearly visible, right? Let me write yes. it again. Let me st start sharing the. Okay. See, the code was like this. you can see what i am writing right see this was my loop i replaced it with i found that p is not changing in the loop now i'm saying do you see that this loop is not equivalent to this the first loop fully uh, is the code yes sir, not? yes sir yes sir why is it not equivalent uh so basically uh okay is Anyone else wants to answer? Or because we are not checking like the if p is null in the second case. Correct. Yeah, this, is this may throw a segmentation fault here. Correct. If p is null. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's what I was saying by. Uh, by the, the the loop invariant expression may throw exceptions early which we want to avoid okay the, can someone tell when is loop invariant code motion profitable if the loop executes that it loops should execute at least once if loop executes zero times then we have done the computation unnecessary okay Similarly, if the expression is uh, this loop invariant code is inside a if branch, and that branch is taken rarely, then moving it uh, or that branch is never taken, then loop invariant I and mean, moving it out is not profitable. But more or less, loop invariant code motion, assuming that the loop is executed uh, more than uh, once, it's a good uh, image. So as we saw, this particular code we can replace it with. uh this way where i move the a sub i a sub ij and this multiplication as a result i get much fewer number of array indices uh, array index operations and multiplications okay 